Hey, hello. Thanks for taking five with me, Wolf Gorlick, Fumit Riffing on IT and IT security. Today, looking at the work of cybersecurity, how to structure a team. Uh, I am officially off of work right now. I'm on PTO, uh, which means I've taken a step back from working, which means I'm thinking about how others should work. Seems like a good use of my time. <laughs> my wife says I have no chill, but I'm hoping she sees this video and realizes that I've really been relaxing all day in a very calm and peaceful way as I've been building a mind map and a spreadsheet about how to structure a security team. Because that's what you do when you're chilling out during a pandemic, right? Right? If I'm wrong, hit me up on social media. <laughs> but the tip for you is this. You can structure and lay out a team by looking at standards. As a matter of fact, you probably should because it allows you to make sure that you cover all the uh, important tasks. And because, bonus, it allows you to define what skills are needed, which makes it easier to do job descriptions and yada, yada, yada. This shouldn't take five minutes. I'm going to walk you through the process that I took, and then we'll go from there. One is, how many people do you have on your team? That's going to vary, right? Maybe it's 100. Maybe it's one. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you how to how many people you should have on your team. However, um, the, the industry standard right now is 0.4%, and that's in the um, North Americas. Now, I say industry standard. That's really the wrong term, I should say. The industry norm, what the percentage is, obviously some uh, industries have a lot more, such as healthcare and finance. Some industries have a lot less, such as retail and manufacturing. Your mileage may vary, but it's about 0.4% of your workforce. So if, if you've got 100 people, you've got one security professional. FTE, full-time. Again, your number may vary. So let's say you have 10, all right? Now you got to figure out all the different responsibilities for these people. I like to make sure that uh, you have one person responsible for one control area. Not always easy. The way I did that today was using two different standards. I used the CIS critical security controls up to 7.1. I was surprised. I haven't looked clearly in a little bit. When did we get to the sevens? What the heck? <coughs> so I used the CIS critical security controls. There's 20 of them. I started dividing them up. A lot of them, in my opinion, really belong with IT. So I've got a nice, lovely bucket for the IT and the service desk. But moving those controls around. So, for example, the threat and vulnerability manager is responsible for, as you might imagine, looking at the threats and doing continuous vulnerability management. The asset and configuration management roles are responsible for having a good inventory of assets, uh, hardware and software, and having a good configuration management standard. I then went through and used the NIST 853B. If you're old and gray, you might have just stroked out because <laughs> that's a big standard. But there are a lot of simple ways to roll it up, right? You can say that all the access control belongs to identity access management, for example. So I took the 853B top level categories for the most part and moved them into individual roles and came up with about 10 roles for this particular a fictitious little organization I'm working in. So now I've got my 10 roles and I know the CIS controls are responsible. I know the NIST um, 853B controls that are responsible for. Things like my asset and uh, configuration manager, my vulnerability and threat manager, my incident uh, detection and response manager, right? Those types of roles. What skills do they need and what training do they need? NIST has recently, recently being relative, Past couple of years released the NICE framework. That is 800-181, uh, the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, the NICE framework. What is nice about NICE is that I can then say, based on these controls, based on uh, this information, what should this particular person know, right? Um, and I can move those tasks around. So, for example, I can say that you know, someone who is responsible for um, the the uh, analysis of our defenses uh, would need cybersecurity defense analysis, CDA, and they might need defense infrastructure support, uh, INF. There's a full list of tasks within the NICE framework that you can pluck out and map to your roles. So you start with your roles, you start with all the control areas, you move things around, and you align the skills. And then, and then, and this is the most important part, you don't do it all. <laughs> you 
clearly define what you are going to do as a team and you clearly define what you're not going to do because we can't do everything and i think it's very important we align to standards but we also are very explicit about what we don't do from there you can derive job descriptions and everything else but you get the point that's been my day how's yours comments social media hit me up